Michael. Uh, this uh, this webinar does not have any uh, prerequisite to it, but I am going to be referring to Lean sometimes, and I'm not going to give a real history of it, but I just kind of wanted to say what the essence was, which is basically about Lean, which its history, I guess, goes back to Toyota, but it's morphed in the software world. It's really about creating environments so self-organizing teams can do their work. And But what this means is how do people work best is they have to figure out how to do their work but you also need to put them in a position where they can get their work done properly. So it's a combination of the environment they're in, meaning their, their work structure, who they're reporting to. And you also have to attend to the flow of the work, how it happens to get high quality, high productivity, and low cost. In other words, we don't go after quality, productivity, and low cost necessarily directly. Rather, we look at eliminating things like delays or things that are in our way. And I'll go into this in more detail, actually, in just the next slide. But this is kind of the overall context that before I really go into Kanban, I want to get very clear about because there's a big under, there's a big why behind the Kanban system and um, an understanding that y you actually already have from your existing work will, will help a lot. So let's actually take a look at how we do work in anything. And here I'm actually showing a couple of ditch diggers, which may not be much like software, but actually there are sometimes, unfortunately, some parallels. And yes, the ditch digger in the back is throwing dirt into the ditch digger's hole in the front. And you could say, well, why is he doing that? And probably because he's not aware he's doing that. And the, the kind of the parable of this is the ditch digger in the front, sometimes lean has also been called, for those of you who've heard of it, you know, one of the mantras is about eliminating waste. Let's eliminate waste. We'll go faster. But I want to point out that sometimes we don't notice waste. The ditch digger in the front, notice he just has dirt in his hole that he's got to get out. And the guy in the back doesn't really know he's creating waste by putting the dirt in. And this is... I hate to say it, I think it's somewhat metaphorically true for us in software, where one group creates work for the other group. So in a sense, what we're going to talk about with Kanban is not so much how do we dig ditches faster, or develop software, excuse me, faster, but how do we stop putting dirt uh, or errors in each other's holes. And, and let's take a look at this now in the software world. So in software, there are a variety of things we do. Uh, some of the good things we do or things that I would say are useful are listed here. And this is not a, um, you know, complete list by, uh, by, by any means. But, you know, we get requirements, we design, we plan, collaborate, program, integrate, test, you know, deploy, document, train, and a few other things. But there are some other things we do that maybe aren't really that useful, but maybe we have to do them. That's why I don't really like the waste conversation per se. Uh, but, like, let's look at what's useful and maybe what isn't actually adding uh, value. Like, we sometimes redo requirements. You know, we sometimes uh, work from old requirements if we don't redo them. Uh, we build unneeded features. You know, we fix bugs. Now, you might notice fixing is, is in quotes, and it's because I would suggest we really don't spend a lot of time fixing bugs as much as we spend time finding bugs. Now, this is an important distinction. As it's not really just semantics. And the simple example I'll give you is if a developer writes a bug and is told about it immediately, say you have some sort of automated testing, usually they can fix it very quickly. If they're told about it two weeks later, even if nothing else has changed, it takes a lot longer. If they're told two weeks later and other things have changed, other people have gone in the code or other systems are working, it takes even considerably more than the than before. So there's this notion that you know, what they have to do is not just fix it, but find it. And there's a time relationship between all these things we'll see in a minute after I kind of list out a lot of the things we do that aren't necessarily useful for us. Overbuilding frameworks, integration errors, essentially duplicating components. You know, these are things that we would really rather avoid doing. The question is, how? How do we do that? You know, how do we focus on what's on the left? How do we get better? And you could say, well, what if I could do the stuff on the left faster? But I'm actually going to suggest Maybe that's possible, but that's not what you might call the low-hanging fruit. You know, that uh, that maybe automated testing would be faster. I mean, that is actually a way to go faster on the left. But except for that, uh, speed is not the big thing. What we look on the right, we see what causes redoing requirements or working from old requirements or fixing bugs. You'll see the... You'll see the pattern here of uh, removing delays. Delays cause problems. Even building unneeded features, we're talking lack of feedback. I get the feedback at the end of the project, per se, instead of when I first build it. 
uh, overbuilding frameworks is maybe the one that's more about lack of technical knowledge. Duplicating components also has delay component because somebody does something and then forget it's done. So the thing to look at is is the things on the left are useful things, and the things on the right we'd rather not do. We have to do to some extent. But the things on the right are either caused by or exacerbated by, made worse by, delay. So if we want to improve our software development process, one of the things we want to start noticing is that delays from, like, when we get information until we use it or when we, um, you know, write something until it's tested or when we, um, you know, make an error until it's detected, that these delays actually literally create additional work for us to do. And the longer the delay, the more work there is. And sometimes that's because we have to refigure things out Sometimes in the case of requirements or lack of feedback, it's we build something we don't need. This is actually the basic reason, for those of you who are familiar, with any kind of Agile method. All Agile methods are about removing delays. They just take different approaches to the problem of removing the delays. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Scrum do the, remove a lot of these delays by forcing batches of work. Kanban's going to take a different approach. Kanban's going to take uh, an approach of trying to get things done quickly without delay directly. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. The interesting question is, what percentage of your time do you spend on the left? And, and actually, take a second to write that down. Think about it. How much time do you spend doing stuff like that's actually productive versus the stuff on the right that you'd really rather not do? It's due to either some sort of error, but what's important to notice, the error, the work to fix it is exacerbated by the time. Uh, actually, I just forgot to mention, you can see integration is also in quotes. That's because actually most things we call integration errors are actually when two teams that were working together got out of sync with each other and it was detected in integration. It's not really an error of integration, it's an error detected in integration. So anyway, hopefully you wrote a number down. My experience is that most people say they're between 30 and 70 percent on the left. Um, and my actually own belief is that most teams are between 10 and 50 percent on the left. Uh, that actually there's a lot of of uh, writing stuff and 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 fixing bugs that we've gotten inured to it because it happens so much. Anyway, we're going to focus on how we can lower the amount of time we spend on the right. That's actually in a sense a lot of what Kanban is focused on. So we're going to suggest that we're looking at delays and what causes delay. If we're going to try to remove these, then we've got to know what causes them. We're working on too many things, obviously. If I work on two or three things, there's task switching involved, but it also, is if, if I work on, say, three one-week tasks, at best, it'll take me, <coughs> excuse me, three weeks to do them all. But the problem with that is now I'm creating delays between the steps. So there's some, this extra work that I'm suggesting is caused by delay. But I call induced work, by the way. Um, sometimes we have delays because we're waiting for people, or we don't appreciate the cost of the delay. So we have it because we don't really feel we have to eliminate it, you know, even though we probably should. Uh, large batches of work that have different stages, like the old waterfall method, a lot of analysis, then a lot of design, then a lot of code, then a lot of tests, that actually increases the delay from when I start my analysis on a particular feature until I can actually get it tested and validated by the customer. And then just complexity, of course, causes delay because they have to look at lots of different things. So this is not a simple problem, but I think it's actually it's actually uh, a question of giving us what we need to do, which is basically to try to finish things quickly so we can get them done. In fact, one of the mantras of Kanban from David Anderson, the creator of Kanban, is stop starting and start finishing. By focusing on finishing things, we actually get that done, then we go on to the next thing, get that done, and by doing that, the delay from start to finish and completion is reduced, and a lot of this induced work is uh, is, is eliminated or or at least reduced. Okay, so let's let's now switch into Kanban. Well, what is Kanban? Um, it's unfortunately an overloaded term. It actually kind of means three things, and I'll tell you what the first kind of simplest thing is is like a Kanban card. And I was at uh, in Tokyo two three years ago, and we were.